welcome back to the channel thank you for tuning in as always and thank you for all your likes subscribes comments etc etc all very very much appreciated right so today a change of format hooray everyone said at once no valeting yep yep so i valeted the car on wednesday had the day off hopefully you've watched the video hopefully you enjoyed the video the car's mildly clean as you may or may not know i only really like making videos when the car's just remotely presentable that's just me that's just me anyway here's the change of plan i have a list and i've been meaning to do this for ages i'm going to make a video about all the mods that i've done to the forester since i've owned it i've had it for five years now five years this november it's currently november so it's just over five years in my ownership i've done seventy thousand miles in it and i'm going to go through all the modifications that i've made whether that's suspension geometry uh brakes white line goodies of which there's quite a few i do like a white line item um quality of life stuff stereo sub those kinds of things plugs key fob upgrade blah 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 and we'll just go through them you know rough cost what, the, what i think of the quality build how easy or hard the installation was and what i think of the end result and if it's worth it they're in no particular order i will get through as much as i can today before either we lose mr sun or i run out of things to say or it becomes boring <laughs> you never know stranger things happened and or you know i just missed the odd thing i had planned to sort of skip through write them down once we're done but that's just not going to make a good video me scratching through what i've done right so we're starting with one of the first things i did to my car when i bought it and i don't know whether this is a subaru thing but one of the first things i did was rally flaps maybe you know they suit subarus and i thought do you know what i'm getting mud flaps maybe it's my age maybe it's because they stop the back end of your car getting filthy dirty and they do help in that department a little bit anyway they were one of the first things i did i believe let's get to notepad apologies they are kalan polyurethane poly, polyurethane rally style mud flaps ebay probably 150 quid can't vouch for how hard they were to fit because i didn't do it car was in for service i paid someone to do it um very very good i like them stop stuff getting thrown up the car i think it suits the look of the car they've lasted incredibly well they're definitely in need of a restoration which i will do standard i'll probably use car pro retire to get off any old coatings and probably g101 something like that a good all-purpose cleaner give them a jolly good clean then get them coated in dark side and then get them coated in pearl so dark side for the black pigment pearl for the glossy top and what's next on the list probably pad somewhere where it's not going to blow away let me find the next item on my list can't not talk about this this is just quality of life stuff uh subaru replace, replacement key services or re, subaru key services the key as i've said in the video review i did of these the key that you get with a subaru oh oh it's not much better than a old sierra key <laughs> from the 90s or 80s oh it's horrible anyway so that had to go and that is a good quality of life mod next text car mats company in ukraine 
I think I saw them on Facebook and I there are you'll see them on my some of my other videos cars not clean on the inside so we're not going in today but they're really really nice they're really nice full set about 180 quid maybe 200 with post quite a lot of money they've lasted five years i'm really pleased with them next boost gauge and defi controller if you can find them they're becoming harder to find let me put my pack there they're becoming harder to find but they are a, a must have and a nice to have can we get in there so defi boost gauge and the defi controller like i say a nice to have a must have ease of fitment can't comment on that it was in for a service i paid someone to do it is it good yeah yeah like i say it's nice to know nice to know you're producing the amount of boost that was specified on your rolling rolling road um uh, print out when it was mapped etc etc next window gussets 70 80 quid each as a lot of new subaru owners report when i go above 60 it sounds like a hurricane inside what's going on it's the window gussets i made a video specifically about this um non subaru people tend to shut the window from here the door from here which puts additional pressure on here which in turn stretches the metal frame inside then it doesn't produce a nice tight seal and then when you drive over 50 60 you're presented with a lovely howling noise like i say 60 70 quid i think easy peasy to fit hour aside maximum is all you got to allow um, purely for if in case there's stuck bolts or the tweeters won't come out and things like that but it should be pretty easy is it good hell yeah makes the world a difference sorry looking at my list so starting on the fun stuff white line arb links front and rear so when i first had mine i'd notice if for example i reversed off of here as I was dropping down, you'd hear clonk, 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 clonk on the back. Spoke to my mechanic about it, which at the time was Extreme Scoobies. And they said, it's either ARB links or suspension, rear suspension drying out. So as always, you start with a cheaper item first. I'm never gonna say no to some white line. So we went with white line ARBs all round. Happy days. I think around about £130 for a pair front, £130 for a pair back. Fitment, I'm led to believe, is relatively straightforward if you can get the bolts undone. Does it make a big difference? Yeah. That will tighten up your suspension. As you will have seen if you've watched my other videos about the best way to spend your first 500 quid on a Subaru. ARBs. ARB links all round heavy duty rear anti roll bar with heavy duty mounts which is what we're going on to next so also when i had the drop links done arb links done 22 mil heavy duty white line rear anti roll bar and white line heavy duty fitting kit fabulous Mine's set to medium, it can go to hard, it can go to soft, I think there's three points. Mine's set to medium, I do like a medium, maybe that's just me, you know. Ease of fitment, not a clue, I paid someone to fit it. Does it make a difference? Yeah, that really tames your back end, it stops Foz feeling like an SUV <laughs> or a bus and all of a sudden you're thinking, oh she's feeling a bit go-karty a little bit frisky and a little bit fun great highly highly recommended next i've got my pad here so i don't have to keep looking away from the camera floppy knob so i remember 
watching a video about Subarus when I'm researching them on YouTube and someone put in the comments that ah, you always know when it's a Subaru when the gear knob vibrates when you start up or an idle and I was like mine does it I don't like it so I started researching how to get rid of it and everything pointed towards a white line positive shift kit or AS Racing Do One, Cartboy Racing Do One, probably others, I don't know. However, because of my white line obsession, I went with white line. And I thought at the same time, I'll also do gearbox mount bushing kit, the positive shift kit, and I treated the old girl to a Subaru Group N gearbox mount just to get it all as tight and precise and positive feeling as humanly possible all in one go and I did read up about the fact of you know what about pitch stop mount and I read the more stiffening you start employing in that area you will transfer the vibrations and or the road noise or gearbox sound elsewhere I will say, catch my breath. I will say, with the mods I done, in first and second, you can hear a small whine. Nothing terrible, but you can. Hence, I, oh, sorry, I stop there. I.e., no pitch stop mount. Pitch stop mount on there is pretty good, apparently. Don't need any more. So, next done done aha more white line more white line and there's more stuff to go back on the gearbox you have to go do that in a minute I'm trying to be organized it's going to be sporadic there's been a lot of water under the bridge so we say with subaru so next white line front upper strut brace now i read about these you know and people say oh it's a waste of money you don't need that um but i did also find a very very interesting website that said um at the end of the day this is a box oh excuse the mess you've got structural rigidity on the chassis you've got structural rigidity on the roof anywhere there's an opening here or the bonnet area for example where the engine's fitted you are removing the box so if you look from here we have got the right hand side of a box the left hand side of a box and the bottom of a box but we've cut a hole in the top so you've removed the box you've just got a u-shape so what i read and it's like everything on the internet you can find an answer that suits what you believe but what i read is the more boxes you introduce the more stiffness you will encourage makes sense doesn't it makes sense now i will admit when i was reading about having a strut brace which you can see there quick release nice nice when i was reading about having a strut brace people did say obviously oh you're better off fitting heavy duty rear uprated white line anti roll bar i'd already done that i wanted more white line why not who wouldn't so front anti roll um front upper strut brace is it easy to fit yes if you do one take this one tip take the ends off fit the ends first then put the bar in don't try and fit it it's one thing <laughs> looking at it thinking this is never going to fit and i remember looking on the facebook owners um group on the uk forester owners club on facebook uk and people saying is this right and it, it honestly if you try and fit it in one go it will look like it's three inches off and you think this is never ever ever going to fit just take the ends off do the ends first they fit a treat and then pop the bar in quick release and rear anti-roll bar I fitted that a couple of years later probably just got round to it you know had 150 quid spare so done the rear one as well easy to fit you pop the little mounts off dremel out some additional um uh, a, a, a little shape either side so that it'll fit so you can put the the inner plastics back on 
and then it fits nice and neatly and the little whoosh, pop out tonneau cover just sits over it it's neat as anything nice so what next oh do they make any difference well first thing are they easy to fit yeah easy peasy do it yourself and do they make any difference well to be honest at that point mine was getting pretty stiff pretty tight in terms of handling body roll body control etc etc turning all getting pretty fruity here's my observation without the well when you put the um upper strut brace and the rear strut brace on essentially you're connecting the suspension left and right so when you hit a pothole with that wheel you feel it both sides when you hit a pothole with the near side rear you feel it on both sides so it's like you've connected the car together the, the suspension together that sounds weird either you've got one and you agree please put in the comments so i don't sound mad maybe it's from other suspensions different in i've done but that's what i believe you hit a hot uh, you driving down the road driving down the road hit a uh, drain and it the sensation you get is as though you hit it with both back wheels even though you only covered it with one that's just my opinion my theory on that notepad so white line roll center correction kit i didn't need this i saw it on facebook it looked nice someone had fitted it on the group and a lot of the comments said it's for cars that are lowered significantly lowered to keep the contact area of the the wheels more contact area the tires on the road when you're turning in etc etc i was never going to lower mine but the car was going in for Meister R's and it was coming down 20 mil at the front and 10 mil at the back. And as I say, I'm obsessed with white line stuff. So I went with it. What do I think of it? As you can imagine, the car's getting very, very stiff, very good at handling, lovely. It had all the items I mentioned before, white line goodies galore, upper strut brace, front, rear strut brakes, rear heavy duty anti-roll bar, rear ARB links all round. So, hard to really tell what difference the roll center correction kit made. One thing I will say is it has made it feel a bit twitchy. So, what not twitchy handling, not oh, I'm scared to turn into a corner. What I mean by that is that when you hit a cat's eye, you get that feedback immediately through the steering wheel. <laughs> um, but it is nice. It, is, it does feel nice. Would I buy another one? I don't know. I don't know. The car's not slammed. It probably didn't need it. I had it anyway. The front end does feel tight. You get a lot of feedback from the steering wheel. But it's nice. I still don't feel like I've ruined my road car. My daily driver. So, what else? Koyo Rad. So, during a visit to Mr. Sean Whiffin, he recommended I go for a Koyo Rad. He was just saying, you know, the plastic rads are prone to letting go. Koyo Rads are really, really well made. Probably last the lifetime of the car. Ooh. Sorry, I was trying to hold notepad and GoPro mount stick. Would I recommend it? Yeah, price 250 ish approximately now. I'm trying to get my boat race into some light. About 250, I think. Really good, really nice. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. No brainer, really. I like that kind of thing. A bit like fitting a stainless exhaust. Fit and forget. Job done. So, few gearbox things. When I first had it, I don't think I've ever mentioned this on the channel. So, when I first had it, all those years ago, it had developed a problem where it'd pop out of sixth gear when you're doing 65 mile an hour. So I'll be going up to you know, Dartford, 
tunnel, just plodding along up to down to sixth, blah 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 blah, bang, and it'd pop out like with the ferocity of a shotgun. Ooh, it was horrible. So, <coughs> excuse me, it had to go in to be done. So, while it was open, gearbox out, gearbox apart. Tim Farmer, highly, highly recommended. Cambridge, if you're in the UK, wonderful gearbox mechanic or specialist. Um, he diagnosed it as a hub synchro. So she had a new hub synchro, but I also went, oh, and the bolt rings were gone as well. But I also went with the um, carbon synchro bulk ring upgrade kit. Nice, easy to fit. Uh, uh, probably not <laughs> way beyond my <laughs> level of mechanical uh, intelligence was it good yeah but then again there was a problem so it was bound to be good um but that was good right so i can remember these last few bits on the paper i think obviously when i got the car it had miltec exhaust and you know started reading about pipes and I got the urge for Haywood and Scott. There was lots of good things being said about them. Handmade, England, yum, yum, yum. So we went with, I went with a, sorry, just waking up the GoPro. I went with Haywood and Scott 100 cell Sport Cat, three inch pipe work. I had Haywood and Scott straight through three inch middle system, no silencer, no cap and Haywood and Scott straight exit Jap style four and a half inch pipe. Lovely, lovely. Sounds great, not too droney. You all see it on my channel. Have a look, I've made loads of clips of what the exhaust sounds like. Fine on start up in the morning on a cold winter's day. Quiet on idle, you know, once it's warmed up, but perfectly fine at 30 40 50 60 70 normal speed limits when you get on the gas you know you've got a good pipe so meister r coilovers you will see on my channel i have reviewed these before i had red and red and red and red if you check out my other video about them i'd fat i'd seen a um a, a, a write-up very detailed write-up on a website that someone had kindly put together saying that you could achieve standard ride height with adjustable Meister R coilovers achieve standard ride height and not ruin the handling still use it for load lugging picking up stuff going to the tip delivering a washing machine etc etc take your family and friends in it it'd still be comfy and you know it would be oem so they were sold sold to me so it's just a case for me really at that point i'd bought them and it was finding getting ramp time getting them in getting them fitted and i've never looked back my old ones had I remember a mechanic saying to me, what's happening with the back suspension, Ed? They feel a bit pogo-y. <laughs> so they were working. It hadn't dropped, but it, they were just a bit like a pogo stick, really. Rubbish. Anyway, Maestro oh, I've never looked back. Comfy. I think when I first got on, they were probably set halfway. Um, I then subsequently fiddled and fiddled and fiddled and went with 10 at the front, 12 at the back, I think. And bizarrely, I hurt my back doing gardening and probably too much car valeting and then set them to soft all the way around because my back was killing. So set them to soft all the way around and it was plush. It was plush. So I think now I've settled on eight on the back, six on the front and it's nice. Feels nice. What we got next? I meant to say at the start of the video actually, I forgot, I'm so sorry. If you're expecting, we're 25 minutes in now, it's too late. But if you're expecting engine mods, this is not the video for you. Because I've never done that. My key train of thought always for Foz was, she's mapped to 323 brake. Shell V-Power 99 Ron. It has Cosworth 
panel filter in the standard air filter box. I was going to mention that next. Free flying exhaust, happy days. And like I say, 323 brake. My idea always was just to treat her to whatever she needs health wise. And it was always about looking after her. Fuchs or Titan Race Pro S1050 oil every 5,000 miles religiously, which I've always done. Oil filter at the same time, air filter cleaned or replaced where necessary, always, and nothing's happened to the engine yet. That <laughs> it might next year, but that's for another video. Uh, so we've done coilovers, panel filter, yeah, and as I say, we're not talking nothing's been done to the engine apart from those elements i mentioned so quality of life stuff kenwood dmx 7017 dabs apple airplay doubled in stereo mm, perfecto mundo 400 quid ish easy to fit absolutely you buy a harness from wherever you bought the stereo from you can fit it yourself easy peasy lemon squeezy I actually did that. It's a miracle, I know. Is it worth it? 100%, 100%, fabulous. Um, I had an eight inch undersea Kenwood 250 watt sub fitted, which is superb. About the biggest that would fit under the seat and you could still use the seat as normal, etc., etc. It doesn't slide around. It doesn't get in the way of people's feet if they were in the back, which they never are, but it wouldn't matter anyway. Uh, Focal speakers all round and upgraded tweeters and crossovers in the doors. Did that make a difference? Massively. As everyone says, as you'll see on the forums, pillarless doors, slightly aging rubbers equals moisture getting in there and then well, when I opened mine up, well, when the mechanic, uh, sorry, the audio fitter showed me my old speakers, <laughs> there was nothing left of them. They had the middle bit and the outside bit, but no, and none of the rest of the dust cover. Highly worth it, highly worth it. Uh, little joke item here, lifetime supply of Titan Race Pro S1050. We just mentioned that, but I thought throw it in there, so people know that I do actually have a sense of humor, just in case. You never know, might not have realised. Uh, caliper rebuild. I won't mention who done it. I won't mention who done it. Anyway, look, what a complete and utter waste of money. Rubbish. Sorry, just tilt that back down. So, mechanically, all right, price, outrageous, end result, and the look rubbish they're going in next year for full rebuild with a company i found called bcs and they are they seem to be the ultimate in my opinion in england lifetime guarantee nearly three times well double the price of what i paid before but if it's going to last it'll last and not on my notes but this reminds me while we're here when i first got the car I had the alloy wheels refurbished now, if any, I've never really had wheels refurbished before, and it's not something that I'd really thought was necessarily that great. Anyway, Rim Renov 8, Rim Renovate, Colchester. Not a great deal of money. I can't remember the price, so I won't mention it. Approximately 100 pound a wheel. Absolutely stunning. I've done 70,000 miles. There is not a mark on them until the other day i noticed one tiny little fleck and it's kind of blown and now we're getting some moisture rain ice car cleaning products probably in it and it's starting to go they're on my list to do so that'll be next year calipers next year wheels get done again next year happy days so another little quality of life longevity of car mega project that i did when i first had it por which is paint on rust por 15 rust treatment to the rear arches and rear underside i did the lot sadly before i had a youtube channel so i have no video 
I'll pop some comedy pictures in now. It was a blazing hot weekend. I had to have a respirator and I stripped it all back, treated all the surface rust uh, with a, like a etching type primer, I believe, and then paint on rust and it finished like ceramic and it is held up fabulously. Brilliant. We're near the end, we're near the end. Hooray, <laughs> said everyone. Sorry if I swung the GoPro then. It's just change, changing page. Right, dash fascia. If you've bought a Forester, you will know. The fascia is made of this weird, sticky rubber. And even if you've got like slightly long fingernails and you turn the aircon up or down, you're in high probability of scratching more of the fascia off. Rubbish. Mine was mullered and the geezer, I bought it off, said, oh, I've redone that. <laughs> I was like, who done it? Do you have a blindfold on? What's going on? It was terrible. Anyway, so I redid that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Build yourself a little spray booth out of old shoe boxes. Pull it all apart. And I talked about that on another video on my channel. Pull it all apart and rub it all down till it's smooth as a baby's bum. Primer it, I forgot. I went straight in, bit of a mistake. And I have had four bubbles come up, but I am the world's fussiest car owner. When I do it again, I'll remember to primer it. So dash fascia, highly, highly worth it. And save yourself a fortune, because if you can import one of them from Japan, I think 300 quid plus customs and post and all that. Heater controls. There's a video again on my channel about this. I'd read that you could just rub and rub and rub and rub the sticky stuff off. I was in the car one Saturday or Sunday and I was having a clean and I thought I'd have a go of it. And you know what? I noticed that the, the little picture of a car or the recirc um, icon, there was actually a line through it, like the, it, the, the, the white part had rubbed away. So I thought, what have I got to lose? I'm going for it. Anyway, I rubbed and rubbed and rubbed for 20 minutes and then I had to make a video. <laughs> I was so excited. So they all come up like new. Long story short, they'll come up like new. Uh, other small, minor, noteworthy things to mention. Lano Guard. She's had a lot. <laughs> I try and do it. I try and do it. Definitely winter. It's due soon. I've done it about two months ago. I've got to get it up on ramps. This time, I'm going to do a slightly different... Instead of doing just the front and then just the back, I'm going to do the ramps on this side and get her right up and get myself right underneath here and get it in all the cavities. Is it good? Yeah, I reckon. I remember taking it into a mechanic and he was just checking the exhaust fitments and uh, he was like, oh, what's that? And I was like, Lanagard, still greasy, still tacky, wicked. You know, again, I love it. Great. Uh, and these are just slight noteworthy things. Miller's Eco Booster. Petrol Eco Max, I think it's called. I did loads about this on my channel. Does it make the car run better? Yep. Even my missus said, what have we done to the car? It's got, it sounds quiet. It was quieter. Wicked. And did it make it more economical? No. Nothing will. Nothing will make it more economical. Except maybe a remap. But that's not what you buy Subarus for, is it? And what else? Sorry, changing page. One step cooler plugs. I read and read and read and read and read about this. And lots of places pointed towards one step cooler plugs and someone I respect had suggested it. So we done that. I don't know if that made a massive difference. Very hard to tell it. You've had plugs 30, 40,000 miles. You put one step cooler in, the car runs better because they're new. I don't know. It always runs nice anyway. So, what's in the pipeline? Could get this done quick before I run out of GoPro battery. I have got spares, but I'd rather not swap. Rear arches need doing, and that is going to be whole new panel, that side, and whole new panel, this side. The whole thing. Lovely jubbly. Can't wait. Can't wait. Um, underside refresh, that's on the list and possibly next year, you know, nuts and bolts and fasteners off, re-zinked, 
stripped back to bare metal, all rust gone, any welding done, new undercoat of choice, not sure yet what to use, but we'll take advice from an expert on that. Uh, bigger intercooler. One day I've read, you know, bigger intercooler, good for the health of the car. Don't know whether to go process west or I believe you can use one from a Hawkeye. Is that right? Not sure, can't remember. But anyway, you can either Subaru that do the one that fits straight in pretty easy. And I like that from an OEM point of view, but the process west one, yeesh, nice, nice capacity. Healthy, cool air for the engine. Uh, one day, probably upgrade the turbo. Again, not for gains, for health of the engine. I'd read, if you want to, you know, when I was obsessed with uh, Ringland failure, etc., etc., reading about that, a lot of people say bigger turbo, healthy. Feel free to scream in the comments about that one. I don't know. I'm not a mechanic. I'm a button pusher and a mouse wiggler. <laughs> and next year, Forge. I mean, I've nearly doubled the miles. I'm just putting my notepad away. I've nearly doubled the miles I've done in this since I've owned it. So I bought it on, excuse me, I bought it on 76,000. It's now on, sorry, rookie error. It's now on 145. So I'm going to treat the old girl probably next year. Anyway, one thing I forgot, I forgot, excuse me, uh, Tegiwa brake booster. 60, 50, 60 quid. Is it easy to fit? Yep. Does it do anything? Don't ask me. <laughs> There's no way of telling. Maybe, I don't know. It's because the brakes were driving me nuts and I thought, you know what? If I throw anything at them that's gonna make them better, more positive, I'll do it. I don't know whether it made any difference. It looks nice under the engine bay. Uh, looks good on the build list. That's about it, I wouldn't recommend it. So as I say, Forge. Just gotta check the bonnet. Forge, it's probably gonna happen. Mile pistons, ARP studs, Cosworth head gasket. A light refresh, rolling road session, and I'd like just a safe, reliable, daily, healthy 350 brake. No plans to go any further, but that's for next year. Anyway, oh, that's a whopper. I hope you enjoy that. That's everything I've done to the Forester since I've owned it. If I think of anything else, I will make a little additional video. And I can now hardly feel my hands. It's freezing, even though it looks sunny, but the sun's gonna go. It's not, it's cold. And yes, so I hope you enjoyed that one. I got myself ready for a waffle. I think it's because the car's clean-ish. I've done my chores ready for a right good proper waffle so as i say hope you enjoyed that if you're enjoying the content please consider a like and subscribe and smash that bell button so you get notifications when i post up new content of which there is loads i do love a waffle anyway take care everyone thanks for tuning in as always see you again very very soon bye bye